On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team travels to Argentina to investigate the alleged post-war sanctuary of Adolf Hitler. Hitler was here. He spent some nights in this hotel. Dustin and Joe hear the marching footsteps of an army of the dead. Joe, there's something up here. Come on, come on, come on. What the What the Then Rob goes solo. Searching for the Fuhrer himself. Adolf, can you come forward? We got some kind of crash coming from the hallway. Will he come face to face with history's most infamous mass murderer? What the hell was that? So here we are in Miramar, Argentina. Ashley, from Dustin, myself, and Brandy, we just want to say a big welcome back. You know, we definitely missed you, and we're happy that you're back on the team and ready to go. Thanks, guys. It's it's really good to be back. You know, whenever you got things to deal with at home, you got to do what you got to do, but I'm excited to get going again. And Paul, we want to thank you as well for sticking with us and enjoying the rest of the cases here in South America. Brandy's going to let us know what kind of case we got here. Hey guys, we're headed to the Hotel Vienna. It was built on the shore of one of the largest saltwater lakes in South America during 1945 by a wealthy German man. Now, during the mid-70s, the lake flooded and it destroyed all of the town. And the only building left was Hotel Vienna. Now, this place has some pretty interesting conspiracy theories. Some people believe that this was actually a compound for Nazi war criminals during World War II. They believe that Hitler didn't actually die in Berlin. He came to Argentina and he hid out at Hotel Vienna. A lot of people believe that the ghost of Hitler still resides at the hotel. And we've been called in by our client, Veronica, and she's really interested in what is going on there. And she's just hoping that we can answer some questions. Brandy, this sounds like a very good case for us. We're really excited back here. We're really looking forward to it. So well done once again. Wow. Never had one that looked like this before. This is incredible. Veronica. Hello. Hi, Rob. Welcome. Thank you. Dustin, you. Barry, Hi. and Paul. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the Hotel Vienna. This building was built uh, between the years of 1940 and 1945. Okay. We were told that possibly Adolf Hitler himself came here to escape from Germany. Yes, it is said that Hitler came here and spent a time here in this hotel. This uh, hotel had different wings. The main wing was the most luxurious. If Adolf Hitler stayed here, it would have been in this wing. Yes, yes, in that wing. A Spanish spy who worked for the German government tells how he saw Hitler being forcibly drugged and removed from the bunker. After the war was over, Adolf Hitler went to South America. He died somewhere in that area in 1962. And this wing uh, over there was the hospital. There was surgery for soldiers from the Second World War. Hotel Vienna also had a large plastic surgery clinic. Why a plastic surgery clinic 400 miles away from Buenos Aires? One answer. People from the Reich were changing their appearance. The other wing here was for workers and employees. The Germans hired the hotel staff from Buenos Aires. They tried to keep the local populace totally in the dark as to what was going on at the hotel. There are some stories here. Some people say that they see appearances or some ghost here. That's something we'll definitely look into. OK, this is the front part of the hotel. It is in bad conditions because of the flood. Here is the 61 room. It is said that a hitter was here. He spent some nights here. 
the visitor took a photograph. Was it taken recently? Yes, it was in April. So very so, recently. Yeah, just a couple of months. Very recent, yes. When he revealed the photo, he saw the picture of a man looking out the window. That man wore a military coat and he had a very thin mustache. And the description you got of this man is it resembled what would be an aging Adolf Hitler. Yes, yes. It could be Hitler. All right, shall we head on? OK, let's go. This is the ground floor. Here we have the stairs. Sometimes there was a light floating up on the stairs. Do recuerdo una noche? One night I was with my mom and my sister, and as we walked by the staircase, we saw this very unusual light. It was glowing the strange color, and it was like floating up and around the staircase. We were very afraid. We just went into our room and stayed there. We'll follow you upstairs. This is the first floor. It is said that there's like a presence here, like uh, someone is uh, working here through the corridor, and uh, sounds of boots clamping the, the, the floor. This is the room 106. A woman spent the night, uh, she saw a man sitting on the bathtub. She was very shocked and very frightened. Did you ever hear of a description of this man who was seen near the bathtub? He looked like a real man, not a ghost. Has anybody else seen this man in this room? Uh, this man, no, no, not again. Just yes, only that's here. just in the bathroom and, and no more. I would think multiple array of activity here as far mm -hmm. as visual, mm -hmm. audio from, from the hallway, yeah. lot to cover. Here we are in room 110. There's a story of a sound. It's like a radio when it doesn't work properly. Like a psh. So did they generally hear the static or It was like a voice? static. And the sound came from this cupboard. And there's no radio equipment or anything within that cupboard? No, nothing. Right? No? Nothing in there, yes. Okay. Nothing. We're really okay. excited to, to investigate here. This place is incredible. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to go grab the rest of the team, okay. get our equipment, start getting set up, and make sure we do a good, thorough investigation, and hopefully have some, some interesting things to share with you the next okay. time we meet. All okay. right? We'll follow you out. Thank you. People say that there are some appearances or some ghosts here, but I, I don't have evidences. So I expect that GHI can give us some evidence that the Hitler reports are believable. I got my start in the paranormal because I wanted to always be trying to answer the questions that no one had gone after before, and that's what this case is. This place probably has more mystery to it than any location we've ever been to. Not just are there spirits here, but possibly the spirit of Adolf Hitler himself. We've all learned growing up that Hitler did commit suicide in Berlin at the end of the war rather than being captured as forces closed in. So GHI could contribute one way or another to a huge conspiracy theory. What happened to Adolf Hitler? Hunting Hitler it does seem very exciting, particularly being British. <laughs> Both my grandfather and father-in-law actually fought in World War II. But if we can capture Hitler's ghost, that would be a heck of a, something to come back to and tell them. What do we got, Barry? OK, uh, camera number one, it's in place. Capture the image of this white light that was reported going up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Camera number two is out in the courtyard, pointing up toward room 61. If Adolf Hitler should walk past that window, we should be able to see it. Camera number three is on the second floor, where reports of the footsteps are said to happen. Good. All right, let's get the lights out. Good to go. EVP session, Brandy, Ashley, and Rob in room 106, out in the hallway. There's said to have been people who have been attacked in this room. An apparition has been seen twice of a man by the bathtub. Who's in this room? If the man is here, we're not afraid of you. Is there anyone in this bathroom? You identify yourself. Let us know you're here. Where are the Nazis? Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
We were doing an EVP session in room 106, and Rob had asked a question to any Nazi entity. And as soon as he did that, we heard a loud boom on the wall right next to us. OK. If there's anyone here and you know where the Nazis are in this building, tell them to stop hiding. Tell them to come out and communicate with us. Where's the man in this bathroom? Huh? You in there? Do that again. What the? Something just knocked on the door. Well, open the door. Where's the man in this bathroom? Huh? What the? Something just knocked on the door. How's the hallway look? Clear. At one point, I began to shake the door handle to the bathroom where an apparition had been reported. At the same time, there was almost a mimicking sound of someone shaking the other door handle in the room. OK, we got to check this again. Mm-hmm. OK. This one. No, wrong. Okay. You didn't even do it that hard. That was like a bang, bang. The other doorknob upon trying to recreate it never acted the same way. So one possibility we're left with is that it was spirit activity, having trouble with communication, attempting to mimic what I was doing. EVP session. Hall and Barry, dining area, Hotel Vienna. Guten Tag. My name is Barry. Do I understand that it's Paul? We're reaching a handout to any of the Germans to come forward to us now. Come forward into this room. We are not here to punish you. But we are here to document that you are here. Paul and I come into the dining room of the Vienna Hotel. We held an EVP session in there. And we were asking our questions and directed them specifically to the, uh, to the Nazis. Is it true the Nazis escaped to Germany and came here to hide? We learned that the Führer, Adolf Hitler, may have stayed here. Is this true? Is das Führer here? Come out of the darkness. You heard that? Sound like a footstep. Jeez. What is that? The what? You know, as we're treading, we're hidden like a uh, tile. Yeah. Sounds like you're over there. Is it true this place was built with Nazi funds? Was this your sanctuary? Someone just went past that window. I do not see anything. Just saw someone. You see where the light shining through there? Just saw a black mass. But it's too high up for anybody to actually walk past that window. Where's the camera? I actually saw something pass by the window. But what makes this more interesting is the windows are actually rather high up. And if somebody had been on the walkway, they still wouldn't have actually passed by that window. So I'm not sure what it was. Come out of the darkness and show yourself to us now. You came here to hang. You knew you were going to have to pay a price. I think we'll end here, ending a VP session, and we'll see what we find during our analysis.
Brandy, Ashley, and Rob, third floor, setting up the static meter. What the static meter does is measure static discharge. So the idea is a spirit moving past it or interacting with it could create greater static discharge and therefore move the meter. If you wish to communicate with us, turn the green light on, please. Okay, static meter is now up to green. One green. Spirits. Ghosts. Come forward. Adolf Hitler. Okay, now we got to two. Static meters going up. We got some rumblings in the hallway. Adolf. Or anyone from the Nazi party. If you're in this hallway, can you come forward? Do you go up to four? What are you hearing? Footsteps. There's nobody down here, but it did sound like footsteps. Well, I've been taking full spectrum shots down there the entire time, and I haven't seen anyone but you. OK. There was at one point where it seemed as if there was a response from both the multifunction meter, which was in static mode, and knocks and bangs when we were asking about Adolf Hitler. Now, do I believe that that means that the spirit of Adolf Hitler is within this building? Certainly not. But it was definitely some, some strange goings on. EVP session end. The claims of this light moving up the stairwell was something that Joe and I really wanted to check out. We decided to take different landings, Joe being on the second floor and myself being up on the third floor. Joe and Dustin on the stairwell where the uh, reported lights are seen. All right, Joe, after you, brother. Hello, my name is Joe. And my friend Dustin's up on the floor above me. If there's any spirits in here, could you please come forward? Joe. Yes. There's something up here. Come on, come on, come on. There's somebody or something up here. So how do I go this way? We only really got about a question in when I heard a thumping, banging sound coming from the area where I was sitting. And Joe came upstairs with me, and we were trying to pinpoint it. That was quick, man. Wow. It sounded close to where I was. Hitler? We call you a monster. We call you a ghost. <laughs> All right, Joe? I thought I heard a whisper. Is there anyone up here who can communicate with us? Are there any soldiers here? Yafia, is she here with you? It's almost. All right, let's go up top. In response to a question we asked, there was this dull thud sound. It was coming from seemingly above us. We decided to go up to those stairs and to see what was up on the floor above. Turns out that's the rooftop area. Wow. This is far from safe. Yeah. I see a light over here, Joe. Hitler? We call you a monster. We call you a ghost. In response to some EVP questioning, there was this dull thud sound. It was coming from the rooftop area. Wow, dude. Whoa, dude. God. That flock of pigeons came out and gave us quite a startle. Oh, wow. Just shine your light in there. There's nobody in there, right? Or anything that can make a thumping sound? No, it's just big machinery. All right, shine your light over here. 
I don't see anything that'd be making that sound. There's nothing up here. Ending EVP session. Unfortunately, we still have no answer for what this sound was, but we did have a lot of pieces of equipment recording, and so we'll have to check and see if uh, anything was left for us there. This is EVP session in room 110. Brandy Ashley and I headed to room 110 to follow up the reports of the radio static sound coming from within that room. We deployed the static meter to see if that could help us track down the possible origins of the sound. So I don't know if possibly it ties into, who knows, a residual of when this was some sort of Nazi communications room, but it's certainly strange, so let's see what we get. If there's anyone here in the room, red light goes on. If there's any green light goes on, two green lights. Yeah. Look at that. What could be causing that when it's just sitting there and we're nowhere near it? OK, turn the red light on, please. Thank you. Can you turn the red light back on? Thank you. And we got a green light now. You move it up to green, please. Thank you. Now we're gonna need more than one green light. At least two, please. Thank you. Two. If you want to communicate, move it up to three. Three. Chris. There it goes. There, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. OK, is Hitler's ghost, is he here? Please come forward. All we want is to communicate with you. Adolf Hitler, you know that we're here. You want to be interactive. If you were in the other room with us, then you probably followed us here. That would make sense. So if you could make that effort before, continue making that effort. You can make contact with us, physical contact. Take our hand. Lay it off. Are you here now? OK, I just got something really weird on my right leg, around my knee. It felt like a really cold draft, but when I felt it, I also felt like something was pushing in my pant leg. During our EVP session, I was taking full drum shots, and Rob asked for Hitler's ghost to touch one of us. And all of a sudden, I felt a really cold draft hit my right leg, and it felt like someone was pushing my pant leg in. Was it paranormal? I don't know. But hopefully we got something on audio or one of the full spectrum shots. Touch us again. Give us evidence that you're here. OK, let's head back downstairs. We've definitely had some strange goings on up here. I had to head over to the area where Adolf Hitler was actually seen. I decided to do this investigation on my own. Sixty-one. I wanted to come up here and do some EVP work, use a variety of tools, and know that there was no possible contamination because it was just me. Because I'm on my own, I know that I needed to bring a lot of equipment to help document any activity that might transpire. I brought a multi-function meter, a deep infrared camera, a high megapixel count standard camera, and a HVIR handy cam. OK, so what I'm doing is setting up this camera in case anything comes up the hallway. EVP session, room 61, elite wing, where the supposed picture of a man thought to be Adolf Hitler was taken. Adolf Hitler, I want my intentions to be quite obvious to you, I'm here to document your presence. We got noises coming from this hallway. 
spirits, ghosts. Tell Adolf I need to speak to him. Okay, we got some kind of crash coming from the hallway. I kept hearing these sounds from the hallway, and I was getting that kind of eerie feeling as if something was walking down the hallway towards me. So for some reason, my camera, which I had recording out here, stopped. What the hell's going on? Battery's gone. Five shots, dead battery. A theory suggests that battery drain occurs when a spirit is attempting to manifest and is looking for something to draw energy from. Got an idea. I put the static meter out in the hallway. Where's my Nazi friends that are scared to come forward and face me? Where's Adolf Hitler? Come on out. Now's the time. Oh my What the hell was that? I kept hearing these sounds from the hallway. This is the area where Adolf Hitler himself has supposedly been seen. Oh my What the hell was that? Just shot all the way up to full green and then right back down again. Things just going haywire. The static meter goes nuts. Full green lights all the way up. I've never seen it do that before. Adolf, I'm right here. I want to speak with you. I want to see you. Damn it. So both cameras are out now. I had my other camera with me, a little backup. Hold. Oh, no. Battery drain at its worst. That was it. No cameras now. Just went up to two green. All right. So I can't take your picture. Adolf Hitler, what are you going to do? Come on, you war criminal. You know what you got away with. And I know, too. Everyone knows. It's in the history books now. Come out and face me. Three cameras dead within five minutes, and the static meter just goes haywire. I've never seen anything like that. Thankfully, my audio recorder stayed there, so it would be interesting to find out if there was any EVP response. EVP session end. Hold on, boss, I need light. Dustin and I done a follow-up investigation of the elite quarters within the Vienna Hotel. Uh, Rob um, had reported that he had battery drain, and uh, we went back up to check. EVP session, Dustin and Barry, on the second floor. Are there any German officers here? Can you come closer and show yourself? We know with uncertain terms the members of the Nazi party did stay here after the collapse of the Second World War. Is Das Führer here? Come forward and show us that you're here. Where are all the German elite now? Let's go up one. Let's see what's up there. Yeah, let's try the upper level. We wanted to make sure we covered this place top to bottom. We decided to go up to those stairs and see what was up on the floor above. What was that noise? It sounds like music coming from upstairs. But I also heard movement. As we ascended the staircase, I heard the music with a deep male voice, almost like a murmuring. Here be session. Dustin and Barry heading to the third floor of the elite. Let's take a look. You heard all that, right? Mm -hmm. Where did all that sound go? Unfortunately, as we ascended the staircase, the music suddenly stopped. 
We investigated that floor very thoroughly, and we'll have to wait and uh, see if we capture anything. In the AVP session. This is uh, the AVP session porn show in the workers' quarters. There's reports of just generally spirits and ghosts, and we're going to try and catch them. Hello, is there anybody in here tonight? My name is Joe, this is my friend Paul. We're not here to harm you. We're just here to document that you exist. Could you please come forward and give us a response? Adolf Hitler, is das Fjorn here? Hitler, your reign is over. Now we're chasing you in the afterlife. What was that? Was that a response? Is that Nazis here? Hey, Joe, come here. Some stairs. Is that Hitler here? Could you please manifest yourself? Oh, Joe. Looks like a tunnel, buddy. There are footprints there. Footprints? They are small footprints. Right there. Right where I'm looking now. Yes. That. That what look the like... hell? Something just touched my hand. <gasps> Joe. Looks like a tunnel, buddy. As Joe and I was looking for Hitler's ghost, we discovered a very small hole, something of a crawl space. There are footprints here. Footprints? Right where I'm looking now. Yes. That. that doesn't look what like the hell? Thing. Something just touched my hand. Are you me? Oh, like man, this? you know what? I probably hit this thing here and it's full. So you felt what it actually was was a little bit of rust. As I leaned forward, I think my hat basically touched up in a pipe, which just basically knocked the rust off. What is in here? I don't think those are footsteps. I've seen this before. I think it's moisture that pulled up in the dust. Hmm. Is anyone in here? The thing is, the Germans had to learn English in case they were ever captured. Name and rank. Well, no, see, I don't think you can get these lead anywhere in here. Shall we move on? Yes. Investigating the crawl space. We'll have to see. We had our audio recorder going as well as mini TV, so maybe you've caught something. Okay, Paul, so do you think this is our access point? I think this is where we're going to be able to get in if we clear some of that away. Joe and Paul were following some noises which led to an area underneath the worker's wing. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get this thing sorted out. We thought this was a good area to introduce the new remote controlled uh, investigation unit and uh, see if we could change that personal experience into evidence. The tank's basically equipped uh, with a uh, night vision wireless night vision camera. Mm -hmm. um, on the back here is an audio recorder and infrared headlights. Let's power this up and see what we've got. So effectively, with this wireless unit, we were able to see the signal from the camera and able to steer the tank. Absolutely. So we've got a door to the left, if we can head that way. That's the doorway there, I believe. Over there. There, yeah. It stopped. She's, she must be resting on, on, on a piece of rock or something. Oh, crap. I think it's caught in a ditch. Let's see if we can retrieve it. With the addition of the retrieval line, we were able to pull it back. Well, she was able to give us an idea of what's down there. All right, let's get back in. It's always important to try and develop new technology in the field and learn from what we see within the field. All right, everyone, good job tonight. Let's get back to Command Central, get the lights on and get packed up. If Adolf Hitler were here, and if he was an intelligent spirit, then he might have been waiting for an opportunity to come forward and interact in a situation like this. It would definitely be jaw-dropping for not just myself, but the entire team if we thought that we had made contact with the spirit of Adolf Hitler.
We're about to go into the analysis for Vienna Hotel. Some wild stories have been said about Hitler's ghost being seen around here because he has apparently attended this place after his alleged death in World War II. So we're going to be looking for that. We're not quite sure what we're going to find or how controversial our findings are going to be if we should find them. Hey guys. We've got Brandy, Rob and Ashley in the rehab area. Take a listen. Wow, that definitely sounds like multiple footsteps. They're loud, too. Yeah, there's no doubting those are footsteps. It'd be good for the client to listen to it and see what she interprets it as. Hey, Paul. This is on the audio recorder that was mounted to the MTC and sent down to the basement on the tank. That's right. You can tell that the tank stopped, and you can hear that it was you and Barry off in the distance. Mm -hmm. But it sounds as if right up in the microphone, if there's like a breath. Hmm. See what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Barry, do you want to take a listen to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hear that, Paul? It's very difficult to isolate the sound. It sounds just like a, a breath. Mm -hmm. Problem is, had it been words, had it actually been something that we could listen to vocally, then I think that would have been great. But it's a new piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what sort of noises it, it gives yeah. off naturally. So I think this one's going to go on the back burner and keep an ear out in the future. It is nice to be able to send a piece of equipment in instead of us actually having to go in. Good catch, Ashley. Thanks. Guys, have a look at this. I think we have caught our ghost. Wow. wow. It's really clear. Hi. Hi, good to see you again. How was your investigation? Our investigation was actually very, very good. Yes, um, have you found something? Actually found quite a bit. There's a lot of things we want to share with you. First, let's talk a little bit about personal experiences. There's going to be things that happen that we're unable to document. Myself, Ashley, and Brandy, two of our other investigators, we were in room 106. There was the stories of someone being in the bathtub, and I'm shaking the door handle, saying, hey, who's in there? Hoping that there'll be a voice on the other side. What happens is the other door handle, the front door of the room, starts shaking. Mm. When you go back and you listen to the recording, it just sounds like a door handle shaking, so it, it's yeah. tough to separate those two. In room 110, Brandy feels a real cold area around her leg and then feels as if a hand or something pushes in on her pant leg. She was fine, she was calm, but it was certainly strange. Now, when I was in the elite wing, I was there by myself, my camera battery dies. I switched to my other camera. Camera turned off, no more batteries. I got a third camera, take one picture, batteries die. As I'm starting to feel like something strange is going on, the static meter just goes haywire. The lights start lighting up. It's trying to read something, but it can't figure out what it's reading. I've never seen this happen before. And to follow up with uh, what Rob has just shared with you, I was in there with Barry at one point, and we also heard what sounded like music coming from the second floor with a, a deep male voice. Uh, we go up there, and no one's there. Look outside, no one's outside. OK. It was something really strange that we want to we want to share with you. Okay. From room 110, where the radio signal is set. Yes. I was using a multi-function meter measuring static. We had this response of, "Can you turn the red light on?" Red light comes on. We can show you exactly what happened. Okay. Okay. Turn the red light on, please. Thank you. Can you turn the red light back on? Thank you. Can we get a green light now? Thank you. Wow. This is an intelligent haunting, a spirit that possibly is aware that we are here and trying to create communication. You know, there is a possibility that there is something or someone trying to communicate from that room. 
Joe and I went down at the end of the corridor here. We wanted to follow up on this light that is said to travel up the stairwell. And we wanted to sit down and ask some questions, do an EVP session. EVP is electronic voice phenomenon. It's where we ask questions of a spirit that might be present and then go back and review the digital recorder to see if there might be any voices that we didn't hear at the time. Okay. We were asking questions to see if anyone's there that could possibly respond, see if they were responsible for this light. Hello, my name is Joe. I'm the friend Dustin's up on the floor above me. Um, if there's any spirits in here, please come forward. Joe? Sure. Yes. There's something up here. Oh. Wow. <laughs> were you able to hear that knocking sound? Oh, yes. If there's any spirits in here, please come forward. Joe and I went through each room, and once again, we'd ask questions further like this and get this knocking sound in response. Wow. Now, you had told us footsteps in the hallway upstairs had been reported. They come out, there's no one there. In this case, we capture something. This is with myself, Ashley, and Brandy here in the hospital wing, and we'll play that for you now. Okay. Yes. Oh, it's a scare. It's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the footsteps are some evidence there's a ghost there. Yeah. This distinctly sounded like footsteps in the hallway we're in. We had many cameras running down the hallway. It was empty. There was no one there. Got something else for you. We're using a full spectrum camera. It captures ultraviolet light and infrared light. It doesn't capture the visible light spectrum, the mm -hmm. light that you and I see. While taking pictures in room 106, we captured something that I think's really going to interest you. This is with myself, Ashley, and Brandy. Um, what you're going to see in the background is our camera person who is documenting how we do an investigation. I want you to take a look at, at the bed. Can you tell us what you see there? It could be the shape of someone. You can even actually see like the little bend of where the legs would be sitting over the edge of the bed there. Uh-huh. This would be the head. Yeah, someone actually sitting upon the bed. Wow. What does that make you think? Well, what the, the woman said about the, the person who appeared in the bathroom was true, that it appeared again. It could be the same person, okay? It could be the same man. Did you find any evidence of Hitler's bust? Based on all the evidence we gathered during our investigation, there's simply no evidence of, of Hitler being at this hotel. Uh, but that being said, you obviously have somebody here, maybe more than one or two guests, because we did capture quite a bit of evidence. People who came here start asking about ghosts. I, what I would say, that uh, they exist or not. In our minds, and the opinion of the rest of the team, Hotel Vienna is haunted. I don't think it's something to be scared of. I think it's something to be excited about. And, you know, we had a great time investigating here. I personally love this place. It's just one of the most beautiful locations we've ever been to. And we just want to thank you so much for bringing us out. Thank you so much. Very welcome. The picture of the shape sitting on the bed was very shocking. I believe that it was a ghost. This was my kind of case. Coming in, looking for potentially the ghost of Hitler. I had some trepidation. <laughs> I had some doubts. Me too. But it turned into an incredible case. It was mysteries beyond the paranormal, involving the paranormal. Yeah. I think it was an enjoyable case for everyone. And that being said, man, on to the next one. Time to move on. That's right, brother.